All right, so we're going to learn more about functions and how functions can take in data and return data and how they make programming easier, easier and more efficient. And to learn about functions, we're going to look at graphics, uh, the web graphics that we did in CS10 with the, the canvas, the HTML canvas, and that context, the uh, graphics context that we use to draw lines and rectangles and circles and stuff like that. Um, but it was a little bit inefficient and cumbersome sometimes, and I'd rather um, have some functions that'll make it a lot easier. For example, if I want to draw a line, I think we have to do like begin path and move to and line to. I wish I could just go line from this point to this point. So our goal here is to build a bit of a, a library of functions that will make it easier. So line, rect, circle, triangle, text, ellipse, image, and image clip are the functions that we're going to work on one at a time. So we're going to start with a, a line function. And the idea here is I want to draw a line from this point, x1, y1, to x2, y2. So let's let's review how some of this web graphics. Um, I'm going to use code sandbox. Um, I've created a, on my dashboard all sandboxes. I'll go to CS20 folder. I'm going to create a new sandbox. Um, create from here. I'm going to use a static template, just a basic HTML5. Um, project. Now feel free to use whatever you'd like. If you're more comfortable with Repl.it, I've used that in the past. If you want to use Visual Studio Code on your computer, um, yeah, use and use whatever you'd like. That's fine. Um, oh, I didn't ch change my settings for this yet. So anyway, in Sandbox, I'm just going to go to Preferences for a second and just change a few things. Um, I think Zoom Wheel... I like to do this um, zoom wheel thing because it allows me to hold control and use my mouse wheel so I can zoom in, make it easier for you guys to read as you're watching the video. Um, and the color theme, let's do that. I think that is under preferences as well. Color theme. Let's just go with dark visual studio. I think I like that better. All right. Anyway. The main focus we're going to do here is I'm going to hit Control X on this line to get rid of it. And really, we just want to have a canvas element. Sorry, canvas. We'll give it an ID of my canvas. All right, so that's the first step in our HTML is we need to do that. Then we need to have a script tag. Source equals, we'll call it main.js. And that will allow us to do some JavaScript. We don't have that file yet, so let's do that here. Main.js. And in main.js, I'm going to give it a title, graphics, graphics library. And, um, okay, here we go. We need to, what do we need to do first? Oh, yeah, let CNV, short for canvas, be document dot get element by id my canvas like so and then that wonderful context we tell the canvas to get a uh, i think it was get context 2d like that and then usually we can go canvas dot width let's go 800 maybe and canvas dot height 600 so that's pretty standard setup Okay, um, I'm going to hide this so I have a little more space here too. That's nice. Okay, um, now the key is if I want to start drawing stuff, right? Well, let's, let's hit, I've got these dots here to show that I have unsaved changes. So let's save that. Let's save that. I can't see anything because I haven't really drawn anything on it. Hold on, let's make a, let's make a style sheet too. Style.css. Oops, so there it is. In my HTML, I need to link to it. I've got uh, Emmet comes installed, which is a, a short um, shorthand notation type thing, abbreviation type thing. So I can hit tab and then just uh, give it the href of style.css. Oh, and I should rename this too. I'm all over the place here, sorry. Graphics library. CS28 graphics library. Okay, good. Um, and out of the box, it has all these meta tags and stuff. We can just leave that. Maybe I'll change the title here. 
um, graphics library. And in the meantime, I forgot about why I'm even doing a style sheet. And actually, let's have all of these open up here so I can quickly switch between them. And the reason I wanted a style sheet was so that I could select my canvas and just give it a little border so I can see it. Hit save, and there it is. Beautiful. And why don't we also select the body and go text align center. Control S to save, and that centers it in the body. Okay. So now that that's all set up, let's actually... So this is, this is a bit of a review from CS10 to get you guys back into this again. Um, let's start, let's draw a line. Right, so the normal way I would draw a line is I would maybe go context.stroke style and set a color. And then I'd have to go context.begin path, move to a certain point. Let's go 100, 200. And I'm just going to make a comment here. This is M.1. And then line two, and let's go to 300, 100, sure. And that's end point two. And then to actually draw it, we go context dot stroke. Well, not stroke style, just stroke, like that. And hopefully, there it is, awesome. And you can play around with things like um, line width as well. I think it's just a number that we give it. The default is probably one. Maybe we'll make it three. And that should be thicker. Okay, cool. Anyway, the, the setting, the, the styles and the line width and that stuff, I don't want to touch that. But this, these four lines of code, I would like to be able to define a function for that. So remember to define a function. We just use the keyword function. And then we give the function a name in this case, line. And then we do open and close parentheses, open and close braces. And then I can take this code here. I'm going to cut it, and I'm going to put it into the function. Now, when I save this, this is going to be interesting. We don't see the line anymore. Because remember, a function is a, a block of code, a named block of code that's storing this code. Right? It won't actually execute this code until we tell the function to do its job, until we call it or invoke it. Now, often, um, what we did in CS10 was we had an event listener that would call this function. Right, When I click on this button, call the function line. Um, but we can also call functions ourselves. And that's just simply, I go the name of the function followed by parentheses. Okay, And that'll say, hey, line function, do your job. So if I save this, OK. This invoking the function line told it to do its job, and it drew that. Now, the challenge here is that I'd like to be able to draw this line in different places. right? I could, I could call the line function again. And just to prove that this is doing something, let's just go console.log line. And I'll hit save. And I think I can see my console here. right? See, there's a number two there. It's probably pretty small, but it does say line twice there. So it's called this function twice. If I hit control C and control V, we can do it three times. Actually, it says five times. We added three to the two. <laughs> okay. Um, anyway, I don't want to do that. What I want to do is I want to be able to pass information in. I want to say, hey, please draw a line from 100, 200 to 300, 100. And then draw a line from you know, 550 to 300, 450, right? I want to use this function, but give it information. And here's a here's one of the key key things about functions in CS20, right? This is different than CS10. We never touched this in CS10. But what I want to do is I need to store this data, right? When I call this function and it runs this code, I want to store this data somewhere. And the way we do that is we define, uh, we put variables inside of um, these parentheses here in our function definition. 
And we want to name those parentheses things that make sense. So x1, y1, right? So 100, 200 will be x1, y1, the first point. And then x2, y2, 300 will become x2, 100 will be stored in y2. And then the next time I call the function, right, this 500 will get stored in x1, the 50 in y1, the 300 in x2, and the 450 in y2. And just to see that, I've got this console.log here. Let's print out these variables. And these variables are actually, they have a, they're called parameters. Okay, they're the parameters of the function. And those parameters will store the values that get passed in. Um, these values are technically called arguments. Okay, so we'll print it out. And we should see, so the first time I call the line function, we've got 100, 200, 300, 100, perfect. And then, oh, whoops, sorry. Zoom it in there. And then 550, 300, 450. Cool. So these variables are storing the values passed into the function. So instead of printing them out to the console, I'm going to use them. So instead of putting 100 here, I'm going to use x1. And that's y1, y2, and x2. Awesome. And of course, we can do this, right? I can go context dot stroke style is assigned red. Right, so set the strokes out to blue and then draw a line. Set the strokes out to red, draw a line. And if I want to draw another red line, I could just go 0, 0 to 100, 100. Right, 0, 0 to 100, 100. So much more, like much easier to work with, right? If I want to draw a line, now I define this function once and then I can use that function over and over again, passing in different values. Okay, so that's the that's the key concept that we're going to be focused on in this entire graphics library, right? We're drawing a line where we pass in these values. We'll do the same thing with a rectangle and a circle. Um, and, and but this is the the key concept here is being able to pass data into that function, storing it in these variables and these parameters, so I can use it. Okay, hopefully that made sense. Um, in the next video, we'll work on rectangles. Okay. Take care and see you in the next video.